that's what's most important. The, none of this gear is gonna make you a better shooter. None of it is gonna, in and of itself, make you more prepared. A few months back, I went to Chuck Pressburg's No Fail Pistol course. And at one point during the course, he said, we should focus our training on what is probable, not necessarily what is possible. And all he was saying was that we have a, a small amount of time to train, we have limited resources and, and skill, so we should focus most of our energy on what is probable and not necessarily what's possible. And this was talking about offhand shooting because um, a lot of time guys get so caught up in trying to shoot perfectly offhand that they lose sight of the bigger picture that in a what situation are you getting into where you are one in a gunfight and two things have gone so wrong that you are shooting offhand only not saying it isn't possible but that just it's not probable so yes you should train it but it shouldn't be where majority of your focus is and that got me thinking about not only my training but it also got me thinking about gear and how that applies to gear because a lot of the questions that i get given what i do uh, a lot of the questions i get are in regards to gear and those questions are often prefaced with these hypothetical or theoretical situations that are, they're, they're possible, but are they necessarily probable? Not, not really. But what I wanna do is try to help you guys, knowing what I know now, the things that I've learned, the training I've been to, the guys that I've talked to, the guys that I've access to, and the conversations we've had, I want to show you, if I had to do it all over again as an average Joe, what are the things that I would buy, how would I prioritize it, and then some of the lessons I learned along the way. Starting from the very beginning, the first thing I would get would be some sort of handgun or pistol. Now, I'm not gonna tell you you have to buy a Glock or an m and or a Staccato or whatever it is. I would say what's most important is that it's a gun that you train with and it's the gun that you train with most often. So because I shoot this Staccato all the time, it is what I carry because I know it's in good working order, I've trained with it, I feel confident and comfortable with it, I know the shots that I can and can't make with it. So that's why I run this. I'm not saying you have to run a Staccato, Again, it goes back to whatever is priority for you, whatever, and, and some of that may be dictated by your budget if you're just getting started. So something like a Glock or an M&P are both great options to get you going. But the important thing is that you train with it. So you're gonna hear me harp on this throughout this video. Training's gonna be the most important part of all of this. So as you buy things, train with them. So I would say getting, getting some sort of pistol for self-defense, um, something with a higher capacity, you know, that holds like the, the Glock 1917s, uh, the M&Ps, Staccatos, things that hold 16, 17, up to 20 rounds, or that you can buy extended mags for, just so you can get your training time in and you can carry more capacity with you. Uh, with that, I would get a weapon light and then uh, jump right in and get uh, a red dot optic to go with your gun. The reason I say that is, yes, you can learn on irons, but through the studies, uh, you can go to Centerfuge Training, talk to Dano, find Dano, I'll link him down below. But through the studies they've had, it's much faster to get people on target and to get them shooting accurately with a dot than it is to go irons and then learn the dot later. So if you can get out of the gate shooting a dot first, it'll help you in the long run, and then go back and learn irons later. That's just my my opinion. But uh, this this would be it, and then I would after that I would seek as much training as you can get. So if you're getting started, uh, average Joe's, we have training for um, intro pistol. We also have concealed training. Um, I would also seek out some performance training. So point one tactics, um, Jedi. Jedi also has some concealed stuff too that's really really good. Uh, there's a lot of great instructors out there, but seek out as much training as you can with this. And then uh, when you buy your pistol, get you a quality concealed holster. Uh, you can get one like this that just holds the gun. Uh, this is QVO Tactical. This is their more discreet. There's a whole video that Jedi did. I'll link it up here. You can watch that video. He talks about holsters and what to look for in a quality holster. Uh, QVO Tactical is this one. This is also QVO Tactical. This is their wingman. Uh, this is a new pattern Roger put out. He has a ton of patterns. Patterns are up to you. You can just get a plain black one if you want. Um, but uh, this allows you to have the mag caddy. There are some others that have tourniquet holders or other things, whatever's uh, more important for you. But get you a quality holster. There's a bunch of great holster companies out there. When you're getting your concealed holster and your everyday gun, make sure that you get a quality belt, a belt that is stiff enough to hold your gun up that doesn't allow it to fold over. Again, Jedi, go watch the Jedi video where he talks about uh, belts and gear but this is gonna be really important for you when you're carrying. The belt matters a ton. So I use Core, the Core Essentials. 
Uh, it has a little ratchet system. I did a whole video on it, I'll link it up here. But this is what I like. There's some other good ones out there, but again, you want a stiff belt that's gonna hold the gun up. Keep that in mind that it's not just not just the holster that's gonna make the, the gun conceal better, but also your belt plays a part in that. But again, the most important thing is for you to get a gun that you train with and train with often. And I would highly recommend that you train out of in the waistband to start with, because that is what you're most likely going to be using it from as a civilian, as an average Joe. If you're law enforcement, mill LE, this doesn't really apply to you because you're probably not watching this video anyways. But uh, guys who are law enforcement, your, your stuff's getting issued to you, so you're gonna be training out of your issued gear anyways. So then, you know, this kind of all just is, is a moot point. But for the civilian, for the average Joe, it's really important for you to train for the most probable situation. What's most probable for you is going to be out of inside the waistband, or it's gonna be in some sort of self-defense situation where the gun is maybe in another room or in a drawer or wherever it's at in a holster, you have to run and grab it. But this is what's most probable for us. Once you have your EDC gun and you're training with it, you've gone to some courses and you've gotten comfortable with your kit, I would encourage you to, to go shoot some matches. Uh, IDPA and USPSA, I believe both changed their rules and you can now shoot from inside the waistband for both of those. If I'm incorrect, uh, leave it down below. But that gives you a great opportunity to perform on demand. And it also gives you a great opportunity to test your gear to see where the gear might be failing. Talking about like your holster or uh, your gun in particular, like if it continues to run into malfunctions, things like that. That's a great way to train and to test that. It's just another aspect of your training and you take what you learn there and you go back and you train to get better. Once you've done all that, I would highly recommend that you get into some sort of medical training. So go to a medical course, uh, get you a med kit, like a pocket med kit. Centrifuge has one, I will link it. Uh, I've got it in here, I'll show you later. But the pocket med kit is a great thing you can take with you. You're probably gonna use that more than you will this. Uh, and then after that, I would also highly recommend you get into some sort of uh, BJJ uh, or any kind of martial arts um, and then try to incorporate some sort of striking in that. Because oftentimes crimes are crimes of opportunity, which means they're usually within reaching distance. So it's going to be very close and you're not going to react faster than somebody who already has the jump on you. So being able to handle yourself uh, without a gun is imp is really important. The gun is not a, a end-all be-all solution to every problem. Being able to avoid situations, recognize things, situational awareness are all really, really important to help you avoid the fight in the first place, right? Nobody wants to, to run into a fight or run into a gunfight. So everything you can do to avoid that would be ideal. And then being able to defend yourself at, in a last resort with a gun is also important. So. All that together is where I would start. That would be priority. And that is enough training right there or enough to keep you occupied for a year or two. But for most people, I would say 60 to 70% of people, your EDC gun, your medical training, and then your martial arts, whatever that is, some sort of grappling or, or striking, those are gonna be sufficient for most people for what is most probable. Now, are there other possible scenarios? Yes, and let's get into some of those. So uh, once we go beyond that, beyond the EDC and things like that. What I would get into next is uh, a rifle for home defense or depending on where you live, you know, it's gonna vary because if you live somewhere out, say up in Oregon or in the Pacific Northwest where you live out on a lot of property, being able to reach out further is important. Or like here in Texas, we have some of these like uh, really open plain prairies. Like if you live like on a ranch or something like that, you have a ton of space. But if you live in like the suburbs or um, a urban environment, this isn't necessarily as important, but it is still very important, especially for like home invasion um, or you know whatever other scenario you wanna input that may be happening or could occur. But I would highly recommend some sort of quality rifle. It could be a, uh, I'm not gonna say a specific brand. Um, I, I have a bunch of Noveskis. There's a bunch of great um, manufacturers out there. You guys have heard me talk about them in, in a thousand other videos. But some sort of basic rifle setup with a red dot and a light to use for home defense or again, whatever that scenario may be. I would say that would be a great starting point and to have that in your arsenal or stored away in the house or as you travel or whatever it is, that's where I would go next. You're probably gonna ask, well, what barrel length? There's a whole video coming on that. It'll probably be the next video, so hang tight for that one. But that that's what I would recommend. Um, I'm not gonna say, again, I'm not gonna say you have to get a specific red dot, but I would say you get what you pay for in terms of both lights, optics, and guns. So if you, if you skimp out and you get a really cheap gun, you're gonna end up spending more money to upgrade that gun later. So go ahead and get something like a Daniel Defense, a BCM, a Sons of Liberty, a Noveski. There's a whole slew of others out there. Take your time as you're going through your concealed carry training, your medical training, uh, working on your, your grappling or your hand-to-hand -hand combat, save money so that you can buy the rifle that you really want, something that's gonna suit you better long-term 
get you a quality optic like an EOTech, um, if you're gonna go with like a scope, a Vortex, Night Force, whatever. But Red Dot, I would say EOTech, Aimpoint, you're gonna be your two best bets, can't go wrong there. Hollow Sun is coming out with some better optics, so we'll see how, how that plays out. And then lights, I would say Mod Light or Surefire, Streamlights are also uh, good as well. So any of those would be a great option. And then again, just like with Pistol, I would say go get your training. Again, Average Joe's has some entry level, basic, rifle courses, and then you can progress on to some other things uh, if you wanna learn long range, if you wanna look at more applied situations or performance. And I would, again, tell you to go shoot rifle matches. Um, you can go shoot, uh, we, we've got a couple here. You have to check your area, get on practice score, find a rifle match, get comfortable with shooting in uncomfortable positions and situations with your rifle. And then after that, I would say that if you're, if you're in a situation, if you're in a self-defense situation or after that, if you're in a situation where you need to grab a rifle for self-defense or whatever the situation may be, you're probably gonna to wanna to have multiple mags. And I stole that from Bruiser. Bruiser said that, that if, if you're you know, for self-defense or home invasion or uh, an active shooter, whatever that may be, whatever that may look like, if you're in that situation and you're going into that situation with a rifle, you're probably gonna want some way to carry multiple mags with you. So I, this is where I differ with some guys. And I would say that the next step, the next thing that I would buy or the next piece of gear or kit that I would get would be a chest rig. So I've got two here um, just to show you guys a couple of different options. This is my Spiritus rig. This is actually a, a mix of Spiritus and uh, Haley Strategic. So the front pouch is gonna be Haley Strategic. And what I have this set up for is for like a, a run and gun, or if we do like long range stuff, I can throw my range finder, uh, my Kestrel, a notebook, all that in here, any little things in there. And then what I'll typically put here in the, the these little pouches is a, a light on one side and then a pistol mag if we're doing a, like a run and gun that has pistol and rifle. And then uh, I got the triple placard for three rifle mags there. Medical down here, uh, water bottle holder here, and then just an extra admin pouch that I can throw nods in if we're doing night shooting or throw whatever else I need in there. And the reason I say carry this versus a belt or going this route before you get a belt is one cost. It's cheaper to get into this than it is to get into a belt. Um, you're probably gonna save a couple hundred dollars. Like my belt, I'll show you in a minute. Um, that setup versus this setup, uh, this is a couple hundred dollars cheaper and I can carry more. I can't carry all my long range stuff on there with it. Um, I can't carry as many mags or lights. I can't carry as much medical. I can't carry water. I can't carry nods on there. So not to say the belt isn't useful, it absolutely is, and we'll talk about that in a minute, but this allows me to carry more gear and it allows me to get into it at a cheaper price. And there's the added benefit that if you wanna get into a plate carrier down the road, you can take this placard off and attach it to your plate carrier so it's the same setup. So if you spend a few months or a year or two training on this, you just take this off, put it on your plate carrier with Swift Clips, and it's the same setup, so everything's in the same place. You don't have to worry about that. So uh, just to keep that in mind, uh, but this is uh, what I would recommend getting into some sort of chest rig uh, that allows you to carry more things. Now this is one option, and I just built this out to show a lot of the extra stuff you can carry. Again, I'll link all that down below. One of the newer options on the market that I'm a big fan of is the Brave Castle setup. So one of the issues with, with uh, chest rigs is they're kind of awkward to get off and on, and then you have like the two clips and everything to go on. And Brave Castle is a certified partner of First Beer, so if you know First Beer and their quality, they've been allowed to use their tube system, and they do some of the sewing for them, so this makes it a lot easier to get into a, a chest rig, especially if you've gotta do it quickly. So if this is something you're keeping in your truck, in case something happens, or you're responding to something in the house, or the area that you live in, this is a great option. I, I really like this. So this is actually Taylor's. Taylor let me borrow it for the video, but I've talked to the guys at Brave Castle. They are awesome. One of the things I like about this particular one is that you can expand this front placard. So it's got some uh, Velcro on here that you can, can do that you can open and then take out either the row of pistol or the row of rifle and then make it a little bit smaller. So if you like that really tight flush fit, you can do that, or if you wanna expand it and keep more stuff in there, you can do that as well. Just undo those, put the next row of things in there, and then close it back over. So I like their placard setup. Uh, you can also hang a, a medical dangler off there. Uh, Taylor has a medical pouch on the side, and then their cummerbund straps that go around have the pockets, so you can put radios, extra mags, medical light, whatever you need in there. And this allows you to utilize more space. Again, 
this allows you to utilize more than the belt setup that I have. And again, for somebody like me who has a small waist, I don't have a lot of space to put things on my belt. And I think, I wanna say this is like 200 bucks or under, which is like a crazy good deal for this setup and allowing you to do these things. There is a coupon code. So for this video, Brave Castle hooked up uh, Goon Life. It is a discount code, will save you some cash. So if you're interested in getting something like this, uh, head over to Brave Castle, again, link down below with the coupon code. I don't make anything off of it, just saves you guys some money if you're looking to get into a setup like this. Once I got the chest rig squared away, then I would move on to something like uh, the belt. And this belt, all it does for us average Joes, makes it easier for us to access things when we're training, right? So this is easier to throw on if you're training or working on specific fundamentals that you're out working on recoil management, working on accuracy, trigger press, whatever that is, it allows you to access those things. But if you notice, I can't fit as much on this belt as I can on that chest rig, but it's still a great training tool. And as JT pointed out, one of the great things that he does is that he'll keep his belt in his vehicle with him or a belt set up with him. So that way he can just easily toss it on and throw it on over whatever he's wearing. And then once there's a lull or a break or whatever, then he can kind of reset and reorganize his gear as needed. But this is a great thing to have for training. Um, my recommendation with this would be that if you're going to get into a setup, get quality gear, get you a good belt. The lead devil belts are the best ones we've come across. Uh, their stiffness, their durability has been great. Uh, there's a whole video up here. You can watch my whole uh, belt breakdown. I have the angled mag carrier from QVO Tactical and then um, the STAC uh, mag pouches. Those have been great for us. A lot of us run them. I, I would say you're gonna get what you pay for. Don't skimp out, don't get some of the cheaper things, uh, get things that are gonna hold them in there because what often we see happen at Average Joe's courses and at range days is people yard sale their gear because they have cheap pouches and then whether they're elastic or whatever it is, they wear out and then the mags fall out and then we're picking up all their gear from all over the, the range. So if you're interested in like a detailed breakdown of this, go check out that video. And, uh, but I would say, yeah, get you a quality, quality belt, quality gear. And the main thing that this helps you with is not just training, but also if you're wearing your chest rig or you're wearing a plate carrier, the issue you're running to is if you're running concealed, whether that's at appendix or if it's at the four o'clock, it makes it difficult to get the gun out. And this frees up that space. This allows you to access those things easier and just gives you more real estate to carry things because now you've got great space to carry pistol mags and more rifle mags and medical uh, on top of what you already have on your chest rig. Moving on from chest rigs and belts, we go to plate carriers. Now plate carriers are a little weird uh, because is it something that you're probably gonna use? Probably not. Is it possible there's a situation where you'll need this? Yes. Especially as we start to see more and more civil unrest and like with current, current court rulings, I think you will see this more and more. So it depends on where you live, depends on the environment you're in, depends on what's going on and what you find yourself doing. But uh, does it serve a purpose? Yes. Uh, will you necessarily need it? I don't know. But what I will say is it's not one of those things that like, you're not gonna run to your car and go grab it, right? If you don't already have it with you, like that's why I say it's more probable you're going to use your EDC gun than it is that you're gonna use your plate carrier. Um, and and it, it's not something that like, if you were in the mall and there was an active shooter, how long would it take you to run out to your car to grab a plate carrier and grab a rifle and then come back and then try to deal with that threat? Also, are you in good enough shape to make that 400 yard sprint there and 400 yard sprint back? Like you're, you're talking almost a half a mile sprint right there. So I, I would say that it's probably, it's not necessarily probable, but it is possible. So if you are gonna go the route, you have the money, you spent the time training with both your pistol and rifle, you know, you've got everything else taken care of and you're like, you know what? I want a plate carrier because it's just my American right that I can have access to one. So I would highly recommend uh, Spiritus. It's what I run. Um, it's got a few other you know bits and pieces on it from uh, AXL and they just make some pieces that allowed me to mount the radio. They make some padded shoulder pads and other little things. How you set it up is gonna be up to you specifically, but as I said before, the great thing is you can take these swift clips, undo them, and take your placard from your chest rig and throw it on there. When it comes to body armor, there's a few good companies out there. Just get a reputable one. The most important thing is that your, your plates are certified. Make sure they're not just tested. NIJ tested and NIJ certified are two different things. So make sure they are certified that they are for the rating that they say they are for. Do you need level four plates? I don't know. I don't know what you're getting into. Probably not. Based on the data that we have, stateside data, you're probably gonna be fine with level three, but if you want level four, go for it. Again, this is, we're getting into the like 
very hypothetical theoretical situations. But Spirit would be a great option along with Haley Strategic. You can get the cries. There's a couple others. Brandon has a new one. Go follow Nine Banger. He's got one he runs. He says it's super comfortable, super light. He really likes that. And then Stratus Armament. There's some, some supporters of Average Joe's. So check out any of those. Those would be great options. If you're not gonna get any of those brands, the main thing that I would look for is plate compatibility, making sure that your plate carrier is compatible with whatever size and whatever cut plates you wanna run, and then look for quality stitching. So when I see things fail, whether it's on chest rigs or plate carriers, it's often the stitching. The, the materials are usually fairly similar or pretty close, but it's like stitching, zippers, things like that is where they really start to fail and rip apart. And that's the cheaper ones are the ones you see fail. So haven't had any issues with Spiritus. Uh, a bunch of our guys run their, their plate carriers and they've been great to us. Beyond that, um, now we get into like the super, like super niche, like very expensive. Now you've got everything else squared away and you've got the itch for the next thing. And then that's when I would say, if you're looking at getting into something like night vision and helmets, uh, that's when I would do it. Once you have all the other things taken care of. And the reason I have this last is they are, they are cool. They are fun. You may get it before you get a plate carrier or anything, any of those things, but Having the proficiency with your pistol, with your rifle, are gonna be incredibly important before you start shooting under nods because you're learning a whole new skill set of how, how to apply shooting in a different environment. Um, and, and it can be tricky. And then having the chest rigs and the or plate carrier or belt makes it easy, especially when you're operating under nods, being able to grab the things, knowing where they're at, being able to reach for those things, and it just be like second nature. So that's really important to get all that squared away before we hop into this. But again, you may do it in a different order. So if you wanted to get into some 31s or like 14s or whatever it is, or a helmet, um, determine what's most important for you. If you're gonna get into a helmet, do you need a ballistic helmet? Again, it, we're getting into what is really like possible, not necessarily probable. I mean, like what situation are you envisioning where you have to don a ballistic helmet with nods that you're going out and, and doing whatever it is you think you're gonna need to be doing. So this is actually a bump helmet. Not to say you don't need a ballistic, but just keep that in mind. That's just my opinion. Uh, if you're a professional, then yes, obviously a ballistic is, is a no brainer. And then how you set it up, all gonna depend on you, but this is a deep dive like financially into two things that you probably wanna spend more money in your training to begin with. So that's why I have this last. If you're interested in us doing a video on helmet setup and nods and even talking about some basic night vision stuff, let me know down below in the comments. Um, I can talk with Brandon and see if I can convince him to, to do some of that. But uh, this is where kind of like the, the journey, like I don't wanna say the pinnacle, but this is kind of like buying kit and gear. This is where it culminates because then now you're using everything all together in this situation. You're going to be using your chest rig or plate carrier. You're going to be using your belt and you're going to be using the skills that you learned with both rifle and pistol as you've been training throughout this journey. So that's how I would, would buy gear. That's how if I had to do it all over again, that's what I would do. And I would honestly tell you that for the average Joe, the average citizen, the average user, you probably stop at plate carrier or even stop at chest rig. Plate carriers, in theory are nice and it is a it's a human comfort where we want the plates but being mobile is a big big aspect of fighting in general not necessarily just gunfighting but being able to be mobile and get around without the added weight the extra weight of a helmet or nods or plates is really important to just get you out of situations and i think that is probably why i would probably stop at the chest rig if i had to do it all over again one to save money spend that money in ammo and and other training and getting able to go see other instructors but if you've got the money and you've got the time and the skill, go for it. Nobody's telling you you can't. It's your right as an American to enjoy any of these. Take that and with a grain of salt and apply it as you will. But I, yeah, I think the most important thing is for, for us to actually get out and train with the gear that we have. And um, for our purposes as civilians, I think that having a pistol and rifle and then the, the small kit, meaning chest rig, and, uh, and belt is probably gonna be sufficient for us and being proficient with that. I think we, we get at times too caught up in the, the gear and not caught up enough in the training aspect of it uh, because tra training can be monotonous and boring and we don't see the benefits right away. You don't get that dopamine hit when you're out training and you make incremental gains. But when, I, when you look back at a year or two years or three years or five years or even 10 years of training and you can see how far you've come, that's what's most important. The, none of this gear is going to make you a better shooter. None of it is going to, in and of itself, make you more prepared. At the end of the day, these are all tools, and it's up to you to know how to use those tools in the right situation, right? I can go buy all the snap-on tools. It doesn't make me a certified mechanic, and it doesn't mean that I know how to build a race car. But having that skill 
is what's most important. Having that knowledge is what's most important, but having good tools does help. So uh, spend your money wisely, uh, do your research, and buy accordingly as you need and for what is most probable, not necessarily what is possible. Uh, make sure you hit that like and subscribe, karate chop that bell so you get notified every time I upload a video and I will see you guys in the next one. I need to be sponsored by Red Bull. How are you guys liking the new background? Do you like that? I mean, I like it, but also I get rid of this in honor of Top Gun. Look at that. What is his hair doing? I don't know. Straight out of the 50s. He talks about holster. Oh, I bit my tongue. What's up, buddy? <laughs>